Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Grady Pasqual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Ms. Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more. Afterward from our sponsors, please stay with us. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. Air Force personnel from various countries in the Indo-Asia Pacific region conducted a low-cost, low-altitude, or LCLA drop, in Reva Ecija on Wednesday. The exercise scenario, an area becomes inaccessible by land after a volcanic eruption. From the aircraft, a cargo containing relief supplies was dropped to the ground using a parachute. Ang probable na gawin natin is ito. Maglalaglag tayo ng cargos with a chute para makarating yung cargo sa mga kailangan puntahan. So yun yung, yun yung basically ginawa namin with the, our counterparts, the U.S. The LCLA drop, a method of delivering supplies from an aircraft, is one of the exercises in this year's Pacific Airlift Rally. The exercise allows contingent troops to improve their capabilities to better respond to disasters and other humanitarian emergencies. This kind of operation is like perfect for any sort of humanitarian uh, aid situation. I know recently a typhoon did hit the Philippines, so being able to airdrop food, water, those kinds of things, medical supplies to people, that's definitely what we do uh, and what we're capable of doing. A total of 779 participants from the Philippine Air Force and their counterparts from 14 countries, namely the United States, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, Timor-Leste, Bangladesh, Mongolia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives and Canada are taking part in the exercise which runs from August 14 to 18. To ensure that their medical personnel can effectively operate in battlefield conditions, the Air Forces of various countries conducted a mass casualty evacuation exercise at the Clark Air Base in Pampanga on Thursday. Aero medical evacuation teams from the Philippines, United States and Malaysia showed their ability to do large-scale patient movement and evacuation. They also simulated in-flight medical care and transfer using the Air Force's C-130 aircraft. We're here to exercise humanitarian assistance and disaster relief and our medical scenario this week was an earthquake response. And so yesterday we treated these patients in the field and then we discussed uh, prolonged patient hold, and today we are transporting them uh, to a higher level of care, a hospital. This is uh, important for us, especially in this season. So this season is exposed to the ring of fire disaster. So if anything happens in this region, we will respond to our neighboring country. So we must uh, have a good coordination. 
from other parties as well. A tabletop exercise on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief mission planning was also held in Pampanga. The activity aims to train Air Force officers on planning airlift and HADR operations in a combined environment. We have learned so much from the past uh, typhoons that come into this country. How important that we practice uh, dealing and uh, managing different coalition forces when they come in and help us. This is uh, probably one of our uh, really good multinational events in order to work together and kind of uh, understand how HADR or Humanitarian Assistance Disaster Relief Missions work. We have 14 countries that are working together and try to trying to problem solve how to do HADR operations during a crisis emergency. This is the first time the Philippine Air Force is hosting the Pacific Airlift Rally, which takes place only once every other year. The PAF stressed the importance of the capability building exercise, noting that majority of the world's disasters occur in the Indo-Asia Pacific region. One after the other, authorities opened these vaults found in a recently raided Pogo Hub in Pasay City. Personnel led by officials from the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission, Department of Justice, National Bureau of Investigation, and the Anti-Money Laundering Council inspected the vaults on the basis of a search warrant issued by a Pasay City court. Authorities believe the vaults contain passports, visas, financial records, employment contracts, pre-registered SIM cards, and money derived from illegal operations from the Pogo facility. The first vault yielded 3.2 million pesos in cash and one passport. The second one had almost 3 million pesos in cash, aside from money in other currencies. Authorities also recovered car keys, passports, cell phones, deposit slips, and sales vouchers. They also retrieved USBs, crypto wallets, and seed phrases or passwords used in cryptocurrency. We're hoping now in the, the rest of the for the rest of the vaults that may makita pang mga transaction documents, financial documents, para makita ho natin yung financial structure ng operations nila. Authorities are studying if money laundering could have been committed. Money laundering involves hiding the source of money obtained from illegal sources and making them appear to have come from a legitimate source. An ABS-CBN source said the presence of crypto wallets at the Pogo facility indicates inflow or outflow of money and could be an indication of money laundering. If uh, we see a, a pattern or a web of financial transactions in relation to the, the scam operations found here in Pasay, that uh, money laundering charges will also be filed. Aside from money, authorities also recovered a gun silencer, bullets, taser, and a handcuff. These indicate na ito mga um, operators na ito ay involved din sa iba pang mga criminal activities. Um, meron tayong narinig dip. Dati, mga reports na may mga kidnapping no, amongst mga Pogo operators. So this only proves to show na meron talaga tayong nakikitang criminal activities other than yung pag-scam. Authorities raided the Pogo hub on August 1st after they found out it was engaged in love scam and crypto scam. Complaints for violations of the Cybercrime Prevention Act and Securities Regulation Code have been filed with the Department of Justice. On August 7th, authorities presented an estimated more than 20,000 SIM cards which have been pre-registered even before they could be opened. They're now preparing a complaint for violation of the SIM Registration Act. Of the more than 600 Pogo employees found in the Pogo Hub on August 1st, around 230 foreigners are still in the facility facing immigration procedures. Bagor has cancelled the license of the Pogo Hub due to unauthorized activities which also affected the visas of these foreigners. Meanwhile, more than 400 Filipinos were set free with around 80 of them still being investigated by the DOJ over their alleged involvement in illegal activities in the Pogo Hub. Mike Navalio, ABS-CBN News. Asia still risk off on Thursday, with the Hang Seng Index now on the edge of a bear market. Investors feeling jittery about a hawkish Fed and China's stalling economy. Philippine shares not spared, even as the Philippine Central Bank stayed on prudent pause for a third consecutive meeting. The PSE index fell by three quarters of a percent to settle at 63.64, supported by net foreign buying again. Phil Stocks Financial's Jaffet Tantianko says the BSP pause is widely expected, but the market was hoping to hear more. The dovish stance that many were hoping for were not heard today. 
and that might add to the negative uh, negative pressures to the local boards. In corporate story, Century Properties Group posts a 20% increase in first half net income to 656 million pesos as revenue grew 27% to 6.7 billion. The Antonio-led developer cites strong contribution from its first home residential brand, First Homes, which contributes half of total revenues. The company says it's taking a very calculated stance in managing its leasing portfolio and high-rise vertical residential developments. In other news, Double Dragon's rate DDMP says it received today payment of 55.3 million pesos as rental deposit for 15,100 square meters of new office space lease in DD Meridian Park. That's 55 million out of the total lease value of 799 million. This new take-up is expected to help it achieve 95% occupancy rate by the end of the year. Meanwhile, SM Prime Holdings confirms its deferred REIT offering for next year will be valued at around three and a half to four billion dollars, which will initially be composed of 12 to 15 assets, which will come from the 82 malls it currently has. Oh, fun in the Philippines. How would you like to get high-speed internet for your home for less than $2 a day? That's right. For about 50 bucks a month, you'll get lightning-fast internet. Are you paying less than 50 bucks a month right now for your internet? Then call Whole Home Connect right now for blazing fast internet at 50 bucks a month with no price increases, no hidden fees, no contracts, no equipment fees. It's a great deal. And guess what? You can try it for 15 days. If you don't like it, you get your money back but you're gonna love it and you're gonna love the price internet for your home for 50 bucks a month that's less than two bucks a day plus no contracts no equipment fees and our 15-day guarantee call now call 800-555-1212 that's 800-555-1212 again 800-555-1212 don't wait call us right now do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out, while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need $25,000, $50,000, or even $100,000, now's the time. Home values are up, and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, Beauty, mysticism, Bata Corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapong po sa inyo lahat. And welcome to the Ronica segment of this show today. I have a very exciting young personality who will be talking to us about, oh my God, a very interesting topic. And uh, many of you there, out there, I think, you still remember what um, we're going to be talking about. And uh, 
help you welcome Miss Mylene Agana Howe Richardson. Um, and Mylene is the author of our very interesting book. And she'll be in, in that book. This is her debut book too. Uh, her first time to write a book. And it is uh, a memoir. A memoir about her mom and her grandma. And we, many of us are still very familiar with these two people uh, that she wrote about. And uh, you remember Tessie Agana? I, I'm one of her fans too. And, uh, and Tessie Agana was uh, really a very popular child star. She was known as uh, Philippines Little Sweetheart and also the Sherry Temple of the Philippine Cinema. Remember? All right. Welcome, Mylene, um, to our show. And Mylene is one of the nine big family, nine children of uh, Tessie and Rodolfo Howe. And these people, this couple, were uh, really very, very active in our community. Um, mostly in the 80s and 90s. And welcome, welcome to this um, very, very pretty, um, uh, civil, oh. I mean, um, uh, a child of Tessie and Rudy. And uh, she's one of the siblings among nine children. Wow, nine children. Nine children. Salamat po, Tita Veronica. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. And that beautiful introduction of my mother, you said it the best. She was the Shirley Temple of the Philippines. And that's just, it's still such a surreal thing to say, but um, that's what everybody has, has said about her. And I just loved, loved writing this book. And it, it actually wasn't supposed to be a book. A, it wasn't supposed to be the way the book ended up to be. It actually was just a passion project that started when my son was one years old. And when he was one back in 2009, um, I decided that, you know, family is so important in, our fa in, in, in everybody's world, right? Everybody has their own family history, their own culture, whether it's Filipino culture, whether it's Mexican culture, Spanish culture, but everybody has that, those family values. And I wanted him to see, to see it, to hear it, not from me because, you know, I'm just the mother. I wanted him to hear the unique stories of his grandmother, Tessia Ghana, and his great grandmother, Linda Australia, my, my grandmother, in their own voices. So what I started doing is just, I bought a digital recorder and we would drive from Chicago. My son and I, Chapman, would drive from Chicago and go to Northwest Indiana and have these amazing conversations that we recorded. Chapman was just running around the room, playing with my grandmothers. It started, I started interviewing my grandmother first, started playing with his cell phone, her cell phone and little trinkets, rosaries around his, her room while we would have these interviews. And I just, I, you know, it still kind of chokes me up thinking about it. Those are the memories that I want him. I took many pictures and I want him to know that that was, those moments are going to be so special for him. And that's really what was the impetus of this book is just writing these stories down for him in their voices, literally, figuratively in their voices. All right. And I loved every minute of it. That's, uh, that's a great story for a start and, uh, and a beautiful legacy that you've done. Thank you. For, not only for the family, but also for the community. Um, okay, so you started this project since when uh, your child was uh, very one. Young. Yes, he was one. So that was 2009. So, you know, he's going to be 16. <laughs> He'll be 16 in February. Wow, wow. I, I have a 16 year old. It's crazy. I can imagine the pride and you know and joy of knowing that he came from a, a very great uh, 
great family from the Philippines. Okay, you mentioned uh, in our brief interview personally that uh, you went home to the Philippines with your family mm. uh, yes. because your mom uh, was... Uh, your mom is still alive, right? She is. She is. She lives five minutes away from us. Anna is still alive. Your mom, well, your grandma is gone, right? She and passed away in 2012. Yes. It's gone. But um, how is how is your mom doing the first place? She's doing great. Um, you know, she's 81 years old now, and uh, she turned 81 this May, and she's um living with my sister, and she's overall fairly healthy <laughs> for you know for 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 an 81 year old she does have she has developed dementia since 2017 so it has been uh she has had um a decline in in the dementia over the course of the last few years but what is so wonderful is she may not remember my name right when i walk through that door she'll eventually remember it when i sing a song to her and she'll say oh yes you're my lead she'll remember um, but when she sings, she still sings with gusto. You know, <laughs> she sings. Oh, it's so cute. I mean, maybe it's not as strong as she once was, but music is. It it lives and breathes within her. It's it's her beat. Um, I always play 1950s music and old old Filipino songs whenever I'm watching her and I'm with her, and she just comes to life. Um, but she, you know, she does have dementia, but she is just, she's, she's doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I did actually let her know that I was speaking with you and she said to say hello. She remembered you. Really? Times. She remembered you. She remembered you before she remembered my name that particular day. So it was, I, it was wonderful. She. Oh my she God. I, you know, I was just telling some friends that, uh, I don't know what in me, but many of these, uh, uh all older people who are suffering from dementia, when you mention my name, they remember me. <laughs> it's the you know, there. <laughs> it was you were such a part of Via Times and you, Tita Veronica, were such a part of our lives, like you said, in the 80s uh, and the 90s. And she oh, she remembers. She remembers. Uh, have you tried showing her your book? Oh yes. Yes. That's that was, that was their reaction. Uh, so when I finally, you see the book right here, when I gave her the book and she looked at the book and I, she remembers that it, this is her and she hugged the book. Oh my it's God. the most beautiful thing. She hugged the book and she said, this is me. This is me. She couldn't, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. And I've read every chapter to her, every revision <laughs> I've, she has been a part of my step. Every, she's been a part of me every step of the way of this whole oh, process. God. So I think she has read every revision. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm touched. Oh. Um, does she live with you? She lives with my sister. My sister lives five, her and her family live five minutes away. That was my requirement when we moved from Chicago to, uh, to Arizona. I told my husband, I don't care where we are in Arizona. It just has to be five minutes away from my sister and my mom. And Which we're literally four sister? minutes and 55 seconds. Sorry. Your oldest sister? This is my older sister. I have two sisters and six brothers. And um, my I'm number six. And the sister that lives here is number five. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's neat. Very close family. Very, very close family. What about the other siblings? Are they all um, scattered all over? Oh, my. Yes, we are. I'll just go in order. It's probably the easiest for me to remember. So we're one of I'm one of nine. Our oldest, Marita, who you said you have met, and we have met before in many you know previous occasions. Um, Marita's in Southern California with her family. My second brother, Radmar, is uh, the second oldest. Radmar is a priest, and he is also in Southern California. He's a Jesuit priest. Um, number three, Roger, is in Dallas, Texas. He used to live here in Arizona uh, when I moved here, but he got promoted and moved um, to Seattle and then got promoted again to Dallas. Let's see, that's three. Number four is Roderick. 
Roderick is still in Chicago area. He lives in South Elgin. So he's our, he's our, you know, our, our home base, if you would. He's the only one that's still back in, in Illinois. And I mean, is he also in entertainment? Is Roderick that... is in hotel, in the hotel industry. Oh, okay. Okay. Any of the siblings in entertainment business? Well, my brother Radmar used to be, the priest used to be, and my other brother, younger brother, Rodney, they both used to act in Hollywood. Oh. Um, so those two were the only ones that kind of dipped their toes into it. We all, I, it was, it was intimidating <laughs> for me personally, it would have been intimidating. Um, so we all kind of had our own paths, but then Thanks. I still have Thanks. other siblings that are all over the place, but we have also four or five, Michelle here in Arizona, yeah, I'm Michelle. here in Arizona. Yeah. My brother, Jun, is right after me. He's number seven. He's also in Southern California. So there's three in Southern California. My number eight, Rodney, is in Japan. So he married um, a lovely, lovely Japanese uh, lady and my sister-in-law, Noriko. And they have a little one in Japan. And then my youngest brother, Riddell, he's in Northern California. So we're, we're all kind of <laughs> spread everywhere. Very interesting. Uh, well, I... And you just had a reunion, right? Uh, you just uh, celebrated a reunion, family reunion. We did. We did. We just had a very big reunion for my dad's side of the family, the Howe side. It was for my grandfather, so my dad's father, back in Illinois. And it was so wonderful. We haven't been back since 2019 with the pandemic. So my entire family went, um, all four of us. My sister, basically there were uh, six of the nine kids that were able to attend with our families, but then our extended first cousins, um, extended family, they were there. I think we had a total of maybe 83 total family members um, all within this weekend. And it was so, I, as I wrote in my blog, it was so good for the soul. It was, we haven't, some, some of the family members we haven't seen in quite a while. We had a a couple that were from the wow, Philippines. terrific! It was it was amazing. It was just amazing. Really huge family, huh? Big okay. family. Now, yes. You you went home to the Philippines. Yes. Uh, some of your siblings last year to receive mm -hmm. the Fama's uh, Achievement Award for your mom. Uh, can you please tell us about that award and what does Fama's stand for? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I have the award right here, if you can see. It's the Filipino um, Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences. And it's equivalent to the American Oscars, if you will. And so she received the Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was, it was so unbelievable to be able to, first of all, take her, to be able to take her there live, uh, at this special, special occasion with the red carpet and everything. And we had about 13 family members also from the United States, some of my siblings and their children and, and spouses, my brother-in-law, my husband went. And it was just so remarkable to be able to not only be there, but to see, actually see the the fans still love my mom. They, uh -huh. She was 80 years old at the time. She was signing autographs. It was so amazing. amazing. I didn't even know she knew how to sign her name still, to be completely frank. So she was just so alive and was always, she was in her element for sure. When she was around the people that, um, you know, her fans, our family relatives there, the Vera Perez family and Agana families, all of the family, it was a big family reunion. So it was, it was, uh, we were there for almost two weeks and it was remarkable it was remarkable to be able to not only see the fans still have her um she's still writing her own story is what i said i thought i was done with her story and when i stopped i concluded my book last year happened and i had to write one more chapter because this woman is she is still this remarkable woman that she you know that we all love and grew up with um so it was it was incredible it was incredible. It was one wow. of those experiences that I think my children will never forget. They're waiting for the next time. They want us to go back out there. And my family out there is wondering when we can go out there. So hopefully soon, hopefully soon we can maybe do a, a book tour out in the Philippines. We'll see. Were they all there? Your, or your children and your siblings were present? 
Not my children. Yes. So my, I only have two boys and both Chapman and Harris and my husband, Andy, we were all able to go. And um, some of my other siblings, not all of us were able to head out there, but my two sisters, so Marita and uh, her, uh, Marita was able to come, Michelle and her husband, Dino and her three girls and my brother, Jun, the one under uh, number seven and his son. So we were all able to go. Are you planning to distribute the book in the Philippines and how? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I am working with the global distribution. And once we are able to, we're actually going to be, I'm going to be launching my pre-launch uh, orders very, very soon. I'm just waiting for the email to, to say yes. And that also includes Philippines, that includes international. Uh, so not only here in the United States and Canada, Europe, Philippines, for sure. Japan, of course, can't forget my brother, um, but it should be everywhere. Wow. Yes. My Lynn, you're going to be an internationally renowned <laughs> author. Oh my gosh, we'll see. Thank you. Um, oh. That wasn't my intent, though. My intent was just to let my sons know who their mother and their grandmother are, because there's also some chapters in there that are they are beautiful chapters and then there's chapters that are real hard chapters to write as well and so there's there, it's a bit of a emotional roller coaster when I was writing it and so there are some areas where not everything was great and maybe there were some um challenges along the way with my mother and you know she had what everybody thought was this charmed facade of a I say facade strategically um, because it wasn't always like that on the outside and every family no matter what how beautiful you look on the outside there's always going to be some turmoil something that is um is going to challenge your you and your life and so we are no different my mother is no different and I think a lot of it also stemmed from how she was raised as a child actor um there are you're raised in a very different light that we don't understand. And um, when when she was raised, she was she was constantly prodded at. She was constantly poked at, and everybody just wanted to be around my mother. And that had led to a lot of insecurities as an adult, really. Um, and so a lot of who she was. Again, my theme is kind of who you are is how you were, where you were raised and how you grew up. And that's the same with my mother. And that's the same when I started unraveling and peeling back the layers of my mother and my grandmother, I started peeling back layers of myself, which I had no idea, I, it wasn't my intent or my objective to do that, but I did. And it was very real and very in my face. And I thought, my goodness, so this is why my mother did what she did. And this is why. I am the way that I am. So there's, it, it was just a big, it was a revelation, this this book for me. Very therapeutic, frankly. Therapeutic, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. but, you know, amazingly, your mom was raised as a, a was she the only child? So she was raised, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people don't understand this, this. When she was acting as a child, she was an only child. They did have, and I wrote this in the book, The, the Legend of Tessia Ghana, that they did have, um, my grandmother had, grandparents had a child, but after 12 days, she died. Um, this was when my mom was two years old. So growing up, when she was in the public eye, she actually was the only child. And there were some times where um, my, my grandparents really wanted to have other children. They knew they wanted a house full of children, but my grandmother had a really challenging time medically and health-wise. But my, um, my aunt, my auntie Mary Lou is, is uh, adopted. So she was adopted when um, my mom, well, officially adopted when my mom was really 18 years old, but came um, came to the United States when she was, my mom was 18 and my aunt was already six. So they did adopt another um, young little baby that uh, there's a great chapter on how my grandparents adopted this baby or actually came to meet my aunt, Mary Lou, my aunt Dudu is what we call her, her nickname. Of course, every Filipino has a nickname, right? <laughs> so Mary Lou is Dudu. 
and uh, she's wonderful. So she does have a sister and she um, ha was married and has four kids. Unfortunately, my uncle Dave passed away a couple of years ago, but has four kids and now is a grand grandmother to many oh. children. We have a growing family now too. They That's live in Valparaiso. She lives in Valparaiso still. Something else, uh, uh, coming from a, a solo, or the only child, hmm. actually. Yeah. Uh, and uh, having, uh, having ch uh, si nine children <laughs> in your life, <laughs> it's uh, really, uh, I, I would think uh, it's not going to be so quiet. There's a, a, no. A, <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not quiet. It was never quiet growing up, never. And it's, um, you know, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I loved our big family, love, continue to love our big family. We, we get together. I love the noise. I love it when my boys, I only have two kids, but when my boys play instruments and when they play, they play the drums, guitar, piano. I, I love it all. I never tell them to stop. Um, you know, I, they used to play drums at the same time. So I would have one, I, have two drum, I had two drum sets at one point. So I just absolutely love the music um, or love the noise. And it's in your blood and uh, <laughs> yes. uh, in, entertainment is uh, really in your blood. Okay, yeah. so I'm not really surprised. <laughs> and maybe one, uh, one of those uh, young kids will uh, turn out to be a movie star like your yeah. mom and your grandma. They can do whatever they want to do as long as they put the effort into it is what I always say. So whatever it is, you just have to work hard at it. And so they're they're on the on a good path for sure. How about um your husband? Your husband is a Caucasian, right? You're married to a he Caucasian. He is, yes, he is. And, and how does uh, how does he adapt to the Filipino culture? Um, from the very beginning, uh, he just immersed himself. My my Papa Rudy is my father, Rudy Howe. He loved to test him. Well, look, um, anything that was unique, kari kari. He loved to test Andy, and Andy was a champ. Immediately would eat the balut, whatever it took. My dad said, you have to drink it with a beer. So, of course, my husband loves his the balut. Loves it. Oh, oh, with balut. That was Papa. So Papa wow, and really? Andy ate balut together, toasted with the beer. I think it was a Miller Lite, probably. Um, so he really immersed himself. And he had grew up in, uh, in uh, the suburbs of, of Chicago and has one brother. So he, <laughs> this was all very, very new. Uh, the big family gatherings. It was it was hard. It was a challenge at first because I had so many gatherings when we were first dating. There was always somebody's birthday, somebody's death anniversary, somebody's communion. You know how we are. There's always <laughs> uh, first communion. You have to go. I don't care if we're just the second cousin. We're still going. And so he grew to understand that Filipinos have a lot of functions and we just go, we just go. So he was always very, very supportive of that. Thank you. Okay, well, where where can our viewing audience uh, buy your book? So when the pre-order is gonna be coming out any day now, um, my website is www.mylenerichardson.com. So we'll have all of the information there. I'm also all over social media, um, but that's all included in my website as well. And I'm also going to be coming to Chicago. So I'm excited to come back home. Uh, the release will be coming out on officially on September 20th. So that Friday, September 22nd, I will be at the Rizal Center and the Modern Duque Association of Chicago USA is sponsoring that event. It is very near and dear to our family's hearts because my dad is from Modern Duque. He was very, very involved. My auntie Ching, my dad's sister, is um, very involved there as well. So she has graciously said um, that they would love to host something. So that will be at the Rizal Center on Friday, the 22nd. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm no. sorry. I've also... Um gotten hold of uh, some officers of the Philippine Medical Association oh, yes. uh, 
because your dad was one of the founders and uh, active members uh, in the, on those years in the 90s, the 80s and 90s. Yes. And um, they, um, I think, you know, the response will be in the positive. Uh, I have not heard any response yet, but uh, I, I will be interviewing the president tomorrow. I mean, uh, next week. Oh, that would be, I would love to be a part of that in any shape. Okay, Mylene, uh, some advice to our viewing audience uh, regarding uh, your book, uh, I mean, uh, your experience as a writer, if there is a sequel and a, a little bit of advice before we sign off. I would just say to all of those readers out there, thank you so much, first of all, but I encourage them to engage in those family discussions, engage in the family history, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, talk to your children, have a sit down because you'll see the connection with your own parents and grandparents and with your kids. And then you'll start to see a little bit more of yourself as well. Sometimes even among all of those complexities of family dynamics, I know they're not always perfect, but it is so important because time is all we have with them right now. And this is, this is a gift. The time with your family is such a gift and just don't ever forget that. So experiencing all of that, remembering that now and gleaning, gleaning the wisdom from, from all of the, that your family can offer is, is what you can give to yourself and to your own family. Terrific, Miss Miss Eileen, Mar uh, Mylene, sorry, That's Mylene okay. um, Agana How Richardson. It's a long one. It's a long one. It, <laughs> she is a uh, well, fairly new uh, writer, uh, author of a memoir, and uh, I wonder if there will be a follow up, and in this memoir. We shall see. We shall see. I have many, you know, I could write about every single one of my family members if they wanted me to, because there's always drama in any family, right? But then you have nine kids. There's always something. But right now, we're just going to revel in in Mama Tessie and just wow, honor her. Sure. And, the and, results are start in a way. And, uh, well, there will be follow-up too most of the time. Okay. All right, Melin. Um Thank you so much for gracing our show today. And I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you, uh, the best for you. Congratulations as a new writer or author of the, the book entitled, the complete title of the book is actually The Legend of Tessie Agana, beloved, beloved child star of the Philippines, right? Is That's that correct. the complete title? Is, the complete book is Beloved, The Legend of Tessie Agana, Beloved Child Star of the Philippines, An Intimate Portrait of My Mother. All right. Portrait of My Mother. Wow. I love it. I love it. I know. I, so I, can't, wait. I can't wait to receive a copy. Of and, course. Um, and well, it is going to be released when? September 20th. Wednesday, September 20th. And you will be here on the week? I will be here on, I will be there on Friday, September 22nd, will be the first event um, at the Rizal Center. And then working with, uh, collaborating with Sama Sama Project, the lovely, lovely Luella on Sunday, September 24th. And we will be at the Davenport Piano, uh, Piano Bar in Chicago as well. So more yeah. details. I, on the website. I do. You're, you're going to be with uh, Lou Cabalona. Yes. Lou used to be our uh, <laughs> our CPR TV and via TV. Uh, she has right. let me know that. What a small, a small world, right? A small world in, in small Chicago. World. I'll be seeing her this coming Sunday for her cover. Yeah. Tell her uh, I said hello. Uh, Mylene, thank you so much. This is it's really a great interview and um, good luck and congratulations. At maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. Ako po si Veronica. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, Maylin. Bye-bye, Tita Veronica. Thank you so much. Salamat po. Salamat. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? 
maybe 25,000 or more. If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need 25,000, 50,000, or even 100,000, now's the time. Home values are up and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. Hi, I'm Cook County Treasurer Maria Pappas. Go to cookcountytreasurer.com because you may have money coming back, either on missing exemptions or refunds going back 20 years. This short video will help to explain everything. Welcome to the office of Cook County Treasurer Maria Pappas. As a taxpayer in Cook County, you can see if you are entitled to $85 million in available overpayment refunds from overpayments going back 20 years, and $37 million in possible missing exemptions going back 4 years. To find out if you are eligible for a refund, or to see if you qualify for an exemption, go to cookcountytreasurer.com. Click on the purple box to access your property tax overview. Search for your property by entering your property address. Also, do not enter north, south, east, or west. When you see your property listed, click View Your Property Tax Information. This takes you to your Property Tax Overview screen, which provides a detailed breakdown of your property tax information, including payments and exemptions. You can scroll down or use the navigation in the left column to quickly access key information. Are there any overpayments on your PIN? If a refund going back 20 years is available, click Apply Now to submit an electronic refund application. Approved refunds will be sent to applicants in four to six weeks. Have you received your tax exemptions in these tax years? This section details tax exemptions that reduce property taxes for eligible taxpayers. The grid shows a yes for exemptions that are applied and a no for exemptions that are not applied. If a prior missed exemption resulted in a C of E or certificate of error, text will indicate that below the grid. The homeowner exemption. Most homeowners are eligible for this exemption if they own and occupy the property as their principal place of residence. The Senior Citizen Exemption Senior homeowners are eligible for this exemption if they are 65 years of age or older as of January 1st for the year in question and own and occupy their property as their principal place of residence. The Senior Freeze Exemption Senior homeowners are eligible for this exemption if they meet the requirements for the Senior Citizen Exemption and have a total household annual income of $65,000 or less. This exemption provides significant savings by freezing the equalized assessed value of an eligible property. For each of the returning veteran, disabled person, or disabled veteran exemptions, go to cookcountytreasurer.com and find a detailed explanation by clicking the top menu button, Exemptions. If you meet the qualifications for an exemption, click the Apply for a Missing Exemption link. For more comprehensive information, listen to WVON 1690 AM Mondays at 1130 and call the hotline during the live broadcast. Go to St. Sabina Catholic Church Thursdays between 9 AM and 4 PM. Or if you are disabled or need further assistance, email us by going to cookcountytreasure.com and click Contact Us by Email at the bottom of the page. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo. 
How would you like to get high-speed internet for your home for less than $2 a day? That's right, for about 50 bucks a month, you'll get lightning fast internet. Are you paying less than 50 bucks a month right now for your internet? Then call Whole Home Connect right now for blazing fast internet at 50 bucks a month with no price increases, no hidden fees, no contracts, no equipment fees. It's a great deal. And guess what? You can try it for 15 days. If you don't like it, you get your money back but you're gonna love it and you're gonna love the price internet for your home for 50 bucks a month that's less than two bucks a day plus no contracts no equipment fees and our 15 day guarantee call now call 800-555-1212 that's 800-555-1212 again 800-555-1212 don't wait call us right now Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quetter bringing you this week's local news from our community. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle announced the five communities selected to participate in the Climate Resiliency Planning for Communities program, spearheaded by the county's Department of Environment and Sustainability. This nearly $16 million program was announced earlier this year and will improve climate resiliency in the villages of Bellwood, Franklin Park, Justice, Linwood, and the city of Markham over the next three years. Recent extreme weather events have again reminded us that the climate is changing quickly and communities must act now to be prepared. Resiliency plans help ensure residents and businesses can thrive in the face of these changes, said President Preckwinkle. Governor J.B. Pritzker has signed a measure that allows multi-occupancy bathrooms in the land of Lincoln to be genderless if a business or public institution chooses. State Rep. Katie Stewart of Edwardsville filed House Bill 1286. The new law allows for any multiple occupancy restrooms to be identified as an all-gender multiple occupancy restroom and designated for use by any person of any gender. The measure follows a 2019 bill signed by Pritzker that made all single occupancy bathrooms in Illinois gender neutral. Another foreign national who entered the U.S. illegally was released into the country by the Biden administration and had an extensive criminal record and was wanted in Venezuela for financing terrorism. In April 2021, Border Patrol agents arrested a Venezuelan national for illegal entry near San Luis, Arizona, according to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. He was charged with inadmissibility under U.S. immigration law and issued a notice to appear before an immigration judge with the Justice Department's Executive Office for Immigration Review. A three-year-old child of a family that entered the U.S. in Brownsville, Texas, and was released by the Biden administration, died after the family requested Texas bus them to Chicago. The Texas Division of Emergency Management issued a statement about what happened. Every loss of life is a tragedy, it said. Once the child presented with health concerns, the bus pulled over and security personnel on board called 911 for emergency attention. After the ambulance arrived, the bilingual security personnel translated for the parents and the paramedics who were providing care for the child. The child was then taken to a local hospital to receive additional medical attention and was later pronounced deceased. Everyone is familiar with Chicago's rising crime, but not everyone realizes the outsized role of the Chicago Teachers Union in the escalating crime pandemic. Chicago's surge in youth violence coincided with CTU forced closure of Chicago public schools in response to COVID-19, long after science and experience of schools demonstrated schools could open safely. At the same time, CTU leadership prioritized undermining support for police, despite rising crime. The University of Chicago Crime Lab recently reported a 50% increase in shooting victimizations of school-aged youth 17 years and younger since 2019. Over 90% of victims were not enrolled in school. 
Earlier analysis by the crime lab documented 8% of those arrested were for homicides, 9% for shootings, 32% for robberies, and 49% for carjackings were the youth 17 years and younger. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for watching Chicago Philippine Reports TV. We hope you will stay safe and enjoying this day with your family and friends. I'm Maria Gurley Pascual. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay and we'll see you back here next week. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is the perfect time to get cash out while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need 25,000, 50,000, or even 100,000, now's the time. Home values are up and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929.